the rescue. That's the focus of tonight's angle. The scenes today were not reassuring. After the president bombed the Houthis and called a lid early last night, he bumbled his way through a school in Allentown today. This is Morgan Sherwin and uh, Sam Sarudi. Uh, uh, Morning with our allies. Do you have a in Secretary Austin? I do. I'm sorry. Was it a lapse in judgment for him not to tell you earlier? I hope that poor girl got extra credit for having to sit there. Now, just as we see the deterioration of our cities beset by crime, by migrants, we also see Biden's own deterioration with each passing day. Simply getting from Marine One to his car is a Herculean task. And he has the darndest time saying sentences with numbers. On my watch, instead of Infrastructure Week, America's having Infrastructure Decade. <laughs> decade. Over a billion, three hundred million, trillion, three hundred million dollars. Billion, three hundred million, trillion. Yeah. Nico used to say things like that when he was three. Now, let's go back a decade or so. It's Friday. We'll have fun with this. Well, Joe, at that point, could at least be edited to look peppy. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble with Jill and Michelle. Just let Michelle know I did do this, all right? Same time next week? Same time next week. Obama getting through that, that better have been vodka. But that was 2014, and now the Biden campaign is scrambling to find ways to make Joe appear vigorous. But is it working? Mr. President, what did you learn about the balloon? I love how he does that little trot and then realizes I better not keep running. Well, they push him out for his first campaign speech at Valley Forge, but then Dr. Jill has to rush in for the big save at the end. At this point, the First Lady almost deserves the title doctor since she's been rescuing him on almost a daily basis. But the Bidens have such little regard for the intelligence of the American people, they think that they can message this problem away. One of the things that drew me to him was his strength. I see that strength and that resilience and that steadiness every single day. Day. He has wisdom. He has experience. He knows every leader on the world stage. He's lived history. What? We now have a new synonym for ancient. It's called lived history. Well, she may be his visiting angel, but she's America's eyes and ears. He can do it. And I see Joe every day. I see him out you know, traveling around this country, I see his vigor, I see his energy, I see his passion every single day. Mm. So to those who say, I can't vote for Joe Biden, he's too old, what do you say? I say his age is an asset. And as for that report that Biden's have been on the vacation more than a third of the presidency. What people don't see is how hard Joe works every single day, that he gets up thinking what he can do for the American people. And he does that, you know, it, his job doesn't end when we just have dinner together at seven o'clock. It, he's on the phone and he's on the phone with leaders of foreign countries and he's on the phone with his cabinet. When Wheel of Fortune's over, he's hard at work. But wait a second, did you say he's on the phone with his cabinet at night? His medicine cabinet? Because we know he wasn't on the phone with his most important cabinet secretary, at least who should be, Lloyd Austin, for at least four days. The vigorous, tireless Biden didn't even notice his Pentagon chief was missing. 
thought you're supposed to ignore that, that, ignore the fact that your president's decomposing in front of you, and instead, you're supposed to worry about the guy who brought you peace and prosperity. This has got to be so different than any races that you and your husband have yes. run. Yeah. Um, it's a little scary. It is a little scary. We have to win. We must win. We cannot let go of our democracy. And if you don't? I don't know. <laughs> I can't even think about it. No, I can't think about it. Well, of course, Donald Trump doesn't jog. He doesn't need to pretend to jog. Neither does he need Melania to act as his nursemaid or his co-president. Now, no one doubts that he's the one making the tough calls and that his tough talk isn't an act. It's not sustainable for our country. We have millions and millions of people here. It is not sustainable. Did you see in New York City with it getting the regular students out and they're putting migrants in their place? We are going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. We're bringing everybody back to where they came from. We have no choice. We have no choice. Of course, he's right. And he understands that America can no longer be a superpower if we drain our own resources by allowing free riders to take advantage of us. Would you be committed to NATO, for example, in a second Trump term? Depends if they treat us properly. Look, NATO has taken advantage of our country. They took advantage of us on trade, and then they took advantage of us on our military protection. Of the 28 countries at the time, only eight countries were paid up. We were paying the difference. And I went to him, I said, if you don't pay, we're not going to protect you. Well, weakness, incompetence, and self-loathing is what the Biden administration has shown us and shown the world from day one. Even Trump's most fervent detractors, though, like writer Brett Stevens, they're beginning to see, even if they don't agree with him, why he's winning. The working class is getting shafted, and Trump's the only one speaking for them. America needs a leader who can navigate the headwinds that we're facing. They're strong headwinds. Someone who knows how to do the job and who believes in and works for the American people. And until we get one, America's going to grow as weak and as frail as our current president. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.